What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna talk about why I made the switch from options to futures. I'm not gonna say I completely abandoned options, but I do trade futures a lot more than I trade options now. And it's been amazing. I made a ton of money ever since I made the switch. And I honestly am mad that I didn't know about futures in the futures market a lot sooner. So I'm gonna be giving you guys some game. And uh, yeah, so yeah, we're gonna talk about, you know, the platform I use. We're gonna talk about the advantages, disadvantages. And at the very end, we're gonna talk about something very, very unique. I'm gonna be talking about how you can actually trade using somebody else's money while you take 90% of the profits. I know it sounds too good to be true, but by the end of this video, you will understand exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, let's start off with the basics. What, what are futures? What is the futures market? And I'm not gonna come up with some definition in my head. We're just gonna read something off Google. What is the futures market, right? The futures market is an exchange where investors can buy and sell futures contracts. In typical futures contracts, one party agrees to buy a given quantity of securities or a commodity and take delivery on a certain date. The selling party to the contract agrees to provide to provide it, right? So that's a basic definition and we're gonna break this down really quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I want you guys just to understand what it is, right? So first off, the futures market is just another market, right? There's a stock market, real estate market, crypto market, futures market, and hundreds, thousands of other types of markets, right? The futures market is just one of them. The concept is the same, right? When you trade these contracts, you wanna buy, buy low, sell high, obviously if you're long, meaning or bullish, and you wanna sell high, buy low, if you're shorting or you're bearish, right? Now, you may think, because I said futures contracts, if you're coming from options, I'm not talking about options contracts, right? You know how you choose a stock, let's say we choose Apple, you could buy or sell shares, but if you don't wanna do that, you could actually do something else, or you can do a bunch of stuff, but what most people like to do, they like to go to buy and sell options, whether it's a call option, or a put option, right? Well, for futures, and this is something that I thought at first because I heard the term contracts, I was like, oh, so you're just trading option contracts, but for futures, that's not the way it works. You're just trading contracts and that's it, right? There, there, there are no options for futures, which is my first point why I love futures. That means because there are no options, that means there are no Greeks, there, there's no Delta, Gamma, Vega, Theta, there is no time decay. Uh, there aren't there is no implied volatility uh, that 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 eats away the the value of your contracts if you get caught in some type of consolidation or choppiness phase there's none of that there is you buy here and it goes up here that's your profit if it goes up here and comes back down comes back down to your entry point you're at break even right uh, if you know with options right for example let, let's just actually go to the chart really quick, really quick so I, I can explain this so you can have a visual at the same time so you already know here right so for options, let's say, make sure I'm sharing my screen, yep. So let's say, for example, let's, let's just say you bought here, right? Let's just say you bought right here, right? You bought here on this candle. Now, let's say you got call options, right? It goes up here and then it comes back, it, it, it retraces all the way back here. Now with options, you don't know how much you're going to be up or down, right? By this point, because for those who know the value, the, the, when the option, especially if you're trading something like ODTE with SPY or SPX or something like that, right? Retracements when you trade options can really hurt a contract. Not saying that you'll be down a million dollars in this kind of situation, but you don't, it's really, it's harder to manage your risk if you don't know exactly what's really, what, what, where you'll be at from a PL perspective um, on this retracement, right? For example, uh, let's do another example. Um, let's say, let's say you got inputs, right? Let's say you got inputs right here, right? On this long bearish candle right here, right? Candle came way up here, right? Let's say your entry is right here now. Your entry is right where this line is, where this blue line is, right? You entered down here, you got input options, meaning that you were bearish. We came down, now we went back up, you didn't sell, right? Now we come back to exactly where your price point is, exactly where your entry, entry, entry level was, right? This is exactly where you entered. Anybody who's traded options knows that with that kind of retracement, even though you bought it right there, you will not, you will still be down on the play because you have other factors. You have 
the the Greeks you have implied volatility right you have other factors aside from the price action that can influence whether you're green or red on a play and this is a solid example right so with options you don't know how much you're up or down and you also know that by the time by the time you get back to this level you know you're down right you may be down 20 30 40 percent right on a pullback like this but and, and you know obviously the situation varies who knows but you also know that as you go back down, when you come back down to these lows that you once were at, there's a high chance that, that even though you made it way down here, there's a high chance by the time you come up here and then come back down here, you won't be as profitable as you once were before. You probably needed to go down a little bit more to get the same profit that you had during that first dump, right? Anybody who trades options understands understands that aspect because you know it everybody's been in that play where you're up and then the pullback took like 20 percent and then you went up higher than you once were then you had to you know get extra extra you know bullishness just to get to back get back to where you were uh the previous point right so that that's what it's like for options but for futures which is the point number one why i love it so much is because if i buy right here right and the price goes down goes all the way down here and then it comes back up to my entry point i'm up zero dollars i'm down zero dollars because if i buy at ten dollars it goes to fifteen dollars i'm up five dollars and then if it comes like just just how it works and it comes back and it retraces back down now i'm break even right there is no volatility or implied volatility or, or, or Greeks on, on futures contracts that are gonna mess up your P&L, right? I love it because it's pure price action. It's pure price action. And that also makes risk management much easier because if you buy right here with options and you go down here, you, don't, you can't confidently say that your stop loss is gonna be above this level or, you know, or manage your risk if you don't know what exactly will happen or to your P&L if you do retrace back up here, it's, it's hard to manage risk. Like, I don't want to lose 40% on the retracement and hold the play because my technicals say I should hold. Uh, or I, I've been in I've been in plenty of option plays where, you know, technicals say I should hold. But my P&O, you know, I have a certain risk management strategy that allows me to keep my losses small while maximizing gains. And I have to respect that sometimes, you know, despite what the technicals may say. So the beautiful, th the beautiful thing about futures is that it's so much easier to manage your risk because of the fact that you know exactly what you're risking and at what point your risk will be met. You know, you know exactly how much you're going to be up at a certain point is beautiful. Right. So you don't have to worry about any of the other factors of trading. Right. For example, here's a, here's another example. Right. Because I want to make sure you get all of this. Uh, a different example. Right. So let's take this, for example, you see this this choppiness right here. Right. And this is the hourly time frame. So this is a many several hours of this sideways action right here. Right. So let's say you bought options right here. Right. You bought a call option right here. I don't know. We don't really know what would happen to the contract after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hours of sideways action. We we don't know. Um, most of the time, what happens during this consolidation phase is that the IV for those contracts settle, which brings the value of the contracts down. So even though we're not really moving, we're not really going up, we're not really going down. The value of your contracts was steadily decrease, right? But what happens with 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 futures is that if I buy at three five eight eight right for es right we're going to talk about what what we trade as well but if i buy at three five eight eight i don't care how much it chops it gets chopped for the next three weeks if it goes up to three five eight nine i will be green if it goes down to three three five eight seven i will be red but if i'm above my entry point i'm green if i'm below my my entry point i'm red right like, you know if we're if we're bullish on this on this setup right so there's no worry about oh we're chopping the value of my contracts are getting killed 
I, you know, how many times have you said, man, the premiums are getting smacked right now. The premiums are getting killed right now on this pullback or on this choppiness or on this consolidation, right? You don't have to worry about that with futures. And I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. So let's go ahead and move on. So that's point number one, why I love futures. I can just trade price action, or I really went through like point number one, one, twos, and threes when I talked about being able to manage risk, like my stop loss, I know exactly how much I'm risking. I know my take profit, my, my target levels, I know exactly how much I'm about to make. So my risk to reward is super, super is very, very obvious and blatant and in my face. Like I can literally say I'm risking, you know, $800 to make 3000 on this player 3150 on this play right i can literally say that because i know exactly how to calculate the play and we're going to go over how to do that as well in this video right so so that's really good stuff um so what's next so we already talked about so we talked about you know the contracts and yada 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 so let's move on with this definition in typical futures contracts one party agrees to buy a given quality of securities or commodity and take delivery on a certain date the selling party to the contract agrees to provide it so what does this mean exactly why did why are they talking about delivery and uh, you know pro, you know providing things well the futures contracts you you are actually selling buying and selling the contracts for physical goods, right? You could you could collect, or you may be obligated to provide uh, certain certain things if you get caught in these uh, in these contracts, right? So let me explain some of that really really quick. So with futures, you you can sell things like uh, barrels of oil, right? You can sell things like bushels of corn, right? And that that's what these contracts are for. Now each contract has a beginning and end point, right? Which are like the which are the uh, they call it the settlement date or for options if you're an options trader you would call it the expiration date now with these expiration days it's, it's you know you have obviously it's the last time you could either buy or sell these contracts so let's say you bought a contract um you would and and you didn't get out before the settlement date you would actually be obligated to inherit whatever like let's say you bought you know a contract for oil Right. You would be obligated to receive barrels of oil for the for the contract. Right. If you did not get out of the contract before the settlement date or if you were short, meaning that you were selling the contract, um, you would be obligated to provide. Right. So obviously you don't want to do any of this. Right. Um, I actually heard a funny story. This dude, he uh, I don't know what I think it was like eggs or something like that. He was in a futures contract for eggs or something and he forgot to sell it. And then next thing you know, he had two, it was like, I think he said 2 million and I'm not, and I'm not exaggerating. I think he said 2 million chicken eggs were delivered to his house, 2 million. And he had to take them because he, he, it was a physical settlement, right? You can't, you know, with, 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 with options, you know, you can choose to exercise the option. Yada, yada, yada. I don't really talk about it, but with features, like a lot of these a lot of the things that you were buying and selling or or the, a lot of the contracts i want to use the right language a lot of the contracts you were buying or selling are physical physically settled contracts so um you want to make sure you do not uh you you are aware of those settlement dates um with the broker i use i will let you guys know what broker i use in a minute um they actually will give alerts like yo you want to make sure you start using these later uh these later uh dated contracts so you don't get caught in one of these you know settlements um which is super important um unlike options futures have each each future each future has like a different settlement date not they're not like the same like options every friday for you know obviously not the not the etfs or whatever or the indexes but every friday you know you have that friday expiration with futures is different expirations and i believe if you go on the cme website um, they will actually let you know what, or, or I'm pretty sure if you use any broker you use for futures, they will let you know the settlement dates, you know, when one's coming, you know, this and the third. So you can be aware of those kind of things. Cause I do not want 2 million chicken eggs or <laughs> delivered, delivered to my house. Um, that, that, that wouldn't be nice at all. Right. So just want to make sure that's noted. And in terms of, and even in terms of buying and selling, you know, remember, that there are no options you're not buying calls you're not buying puts you're either buying right believing it's going to go up or you're selling believing it's going to go down so the same concept but they're just called different things yeah and one thing i want to say for my options traders 
if you are shorting, meaning that you are betting that the share price is going to go down, um, I want to let you guys know that you are you when you short anything, whether you're in the, in the stock market or whether it doesn't matter what you short, you can always lose more than you put in, because you are when you sh when you're shorting, you're not. I don't want to really get in. I don't. I don't. I want to focus on this, but I just want to let you guys know when you are shorting a stock, for example, if you short at ten and a stock goes to five, then you make five dollars right per per share that you have but if you short and it goes from 10 to 20 then you will owe ten dollars right so imagine if it goes from 10 to 50 or 10 to 100 or 10 to 500 now obviously you have risk management in place but i don't want you, i would just want it, it's something i have to say because you don't i don't want people getting caught or thinking you can it's just like put options where you can only lose what you put in Right, it's not it's not how it works when you're shorting anything. So just remember that. Uh, do your own research on that so you can know more about it. Uh, that's not where I want to kind of go with this, but I just wanted to make that known. All right. So next, Isaac, how much does it cost to trade futures? Right now, we're gonna get into how they're priced and how they move uh, in like five seconds. But one what one way like what it costs. Well, first off. <laughs> Sorry, I just went all over the place. First off, fu the futures market is heavily leveraged. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of leverage involved because these futures contracts are super expensive. They're, they're not cheap. They're super expensive by themselves without leverage. So they're heavily leveraged, meaning that with a little bit of money, you can control something that's worth a lot, right? But with that, obviously, each broker isn't willing to give you the same amount of leverage. Uh, so how much it costs per to trade will kind of depend on how much leverage you are receiving. So if you share with Thinkorswim, you'll typically you'll need more leverage, right? Because Thinkorswim doesn't really give you, you know, it's not the best futures platform out there. But if you do something like Tradeovate, which is what I use, they give you a lot of leverage, right? So it requires less to make more but obviously they have stuff in place to keep themselves protect protected as well but i just wanted to let that be known right so let's go ahead and get into how futures move now as you can see here uh you're looking at my screen on the top left you can see es right and we're going to talk about what you trade as well at the same time right so you have es and then you have tick size tick value right now es ES stands for the S&P 500. Um, there are people in my chat who really were having a hard time understanding that when I said ES, I was referring to the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 and SPY is the same exact. It's the same exact thing. There's no difference. S&P 500 is the S&P 500, whether it's in the futures market or in the um, or in the uh, what's it called, the stock market, right? It's the it's the same thing. So don't trip. Right, so if I say ES, I'm referring to SPY. If I say SPY, same thing. Yes, there, there. It's the same thing. It's the same as that chart. All of that stuff. All right, right. So let's go ahead and talk about how much money, or how, or how ES moves. Because we already talked about margin and and the amount of money being uh, being dependent upon how much de being dependent upon how much margin you have access to. Yada yada yada. But as you can see here, we have ES, right? slash es and then you have tick size and you have tick value now what does tick size and tick value mean isaac well i'm glad you asked now as you see i just pulled up active trader on my on the right side and you can see here we move in 25 cent increments right so it says you see here it says 407800 407825 407850 407875 then 40, 40, 79, zero, zero. And then 25, 50, 75 dollars, 25, 50, 75 dollars. So ES moves in 25 cent increments. Now that's called the tick size. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the tick value. How much is e how much is each tick worth? So each 25 cent tick is worth how much, right? So each 25% tick, 25 cent tick is worth twelve dollars and fifty cents so for each contract you have each tick each 25 cent tick is going to be worth twelve dollars and fifty cents now obviously if you have a small account you're like uh okay yeah that's that's a pretty big move um for one individual tick 
Imagine if you just get a fat candle out of nowhere and you have like, <laughs> and you're getting hit for twelve fifty each contract you have, right? So obviously that can be a pretty pretty intimidating number. But I have something for you guys that you guys are gonna love, right? So if this is too big for you, if you have a small account, or maybe you just want to take less risk, you can do what's called and let, let me uh, let me backtrack real quick. I guess it's the SP five hundred, but I want to be known. You see this? It says E mini. S&P 500, right? Now you understand what this means now. So when I when I say that you want to trade something smaller but the same exact thing, you can trade MES, which is called the Micro E Mini S&P 500. So it's pretty much a smaller version of the uh, of ES. MES is a smaller version of ES. How is it smaller, Isaac? Well, it still moves in 25 cent increments, as you can see, right? Right now it's at 447 cent. 40.77.50, right? And then you have 75 a dollar, 25 57 a dollar, right? But each tick value, the tick value for each uh, for each individual 25 cent increment is a dollar 25. So it goes from 12.50 per tick to a dollar. I'm sorry. Was it 12.50? Hold on, I'm having a brain. Yeah, it goes from 12.50 per tick down. To a dollar twenty-five per tick. So on the same, and you can see the charts are exactly the same, right? We're on the four-hour for MES right now, and the watch when I switch to ES. Same chart, same exact chart, same exact move, same exact numbers. There's nothing different except for the tick value, right? And the tick value is ten times smaller than the the tick value for MES is ten times smaller than the tick value for ES. So essentially, the same move. For ES will make you 10 times more than it will if you were trade MES but who cares we're focusing on only you we're not comparing to what you would have made if you had this yada 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 consistency and uh, that's what we're focused on consistency and growth so if you need to trade MES because maybe you have a small account or maybe you're not ready to put on much risk then that's what you need to trade every now and then I'll go to MES right depending on how I want to manage some risk or depending on maybe if maybe if I, I lost the last three trades I need to you know get my confidence back up Right, I need to get a small win, or maybe a win with a with, with smaller risk involved. Then I moved to uh, MES, right? So that's a quick example, right? Uh, and that's one of the common common uh, things to trade for for uh, the uh, for future in the futures market. Next, we have NQ, which is E Mini Nasdaq, right? And as you can see here, we have the same quarterly uh, quarterly tick right here. And we also have a tick value of five dollars so it's not as aggressive as es but it's not bad either so tick size 25 dollars each each tick is worth five dollars and if that's too big for you you have m in q tick size 25 cents tick value 50 cents so super small right or much smaller than uh es mes um, but obviously, if you want to trade in Q, this is here for you, right? So th that's another thing. Uh, another one would be CL. This is crude oil, right? One of my favorites, right? I, I love the price action, the consistent, beautiful, the consistently beautiful price action with, uh, with CL is very nice. Uh, so you can see here, this one moves has a different tick size. The tick size for CL is one penny, so it moves in pennies. But each penny is worth ten dollars right so so imagine how mind-boggling that is so 81 81 dollars and 44 cents is the current price right if it goes up to 81.45 as ten dollars imagine that right now imagine this thing gaps up ten dollars on you <laughs> imagine imagine you're in some shorts and this thing gaps up ten dollars <laughs> Awesome, awesome, crazy news. You're done. You're done. You're immediately done. Finished. Finito. Liquidated. <laughs> That's not funny, but it is. It is. All right. But so let's say you want to trade CL on a smaller scale. Let's look at MCL, the micro version, right? Tick size still moving pennies, but each tick value, I'm sorry, the tick size is, we're still moving in pennies, and each, uh, each tick will give you uh, a total of $1 per tick. Right. So that, that's just a few examples. And just the next common one would probably be YM. Uh, 
ym tick size it moves in whole numbers so it moves in one and the value of each one dollar is five dollars and then you have mym the micros you have you have tick size still one and then each each tick is going to give you a value of uh 50 cents per tick right so hopefully that made sense for you um and, and gave you some clarity on what you actually need or what you actually can expect from from this now this little yellow box up here is not going to be on thinkorswim when you actually first start trading i unfortunately don't know how i where i got it from but it was some video i will find it go on my youtube history and find it and i will when i find it i'll credit the uh whoever i'll credit whoever whatever their youtube creator was in my in my description and i will go ahead and post that link as well or just post a link to their video just to make sure they get full credit for it um but yeah it's super super dope uh and he'll also have instructions on how to put it on there but i had to find the video first uh yeah so what is next and i just want to make sure i'm touching on everything so i'm kind of thinking at the same time because i don't want to leave you guys leave out anything but i think i'm doing a pretty good job so isaac you mentioned you use trade over to trade to, to as your broker right first off let me say this i use thinkorswim to chart i may i use trade over to trade futures but i use thinkorswim to chart but i use trade over slash trading view to execute isaac what do you mean slash okay cool let me i'm glad you asked yet again let me actually tell you what i mean or show you right so here so here right now we have and just want to make sure you guys can see my screen i think you can yep you guys can see my screen so right now so right now we're on trading view right now as you can see here there's trade of eight and there's a green dot next to trade of eight and you can see it pops up it says connect it right i have linked my trade of eight to trading view Right, and by the way, if you want to use Trade of Eight, Trade of Eight, I think requires only fifty dollars to trade MES. Remember the micro version of ES, and five hundred to trade ES. And those are minimums, obviously. Um, those are really good numbers. Um, so if you want to check out their platform, I highly recommend it. They do not have a referral link, um, so I will not have one in my description. But if you go to TradeOvate.com or type it in Google, and that's Trade Ovate. I'll put it in my link, or I'll put it in my description as well. You can definitely check them out. People ask me what's the best. I've only used Trade of Eight, and I have no problem with them whatsoever. So that's I can't have an opinion on everybody else. So Isaac, you have linked Trade of Eight to your uh, to your Trading View. Yes, I do chart as well on Trading View sometimes, right? But as you can see, you know I, I prefer to trade on uh, Thinkorswim or chart on Thinkorswim. But here's the beauty about Trade of Eight or about Trading View, right? And that Trade of Eight can lab. If I want to execute on here, I can, which is what I do. What I want to do, I want to right click, go to trade, create new order. If you don't have a mouse, you just click right here on the order panel, the top and bottom arrow, and this will pop up. Now, as you can see, I'm trading MES, right? So let's walk through a typical trade I'd make, right? Let's say I want to buy, so I'm bullish. I enter how many contracts I want to buy. So let's say I want to buy 10. I enter that. And here I can already manage my risk. So check this out. Let's say I'm, I want to go long. All right, so I'm bullish on this. And this is just, I'm just making this up, right? This, I wouldn't actually take this right now. So let's say I have my take private stop loss. So my stop loss is going to be under this level. So let's say 40.75.75. So I'll go in here, type this 4075.75, right? So my risk is $175 on this trade already. Let's say my take profit is going to be 4089.50. 4089.50. So for this move from current price, up here because I'm doing a market order and by the way unlike options futures execute immediately 
If you buy, it fills immediately. If you sell, it fills immediately. There's, you don't have to worry about not getting filled or having to wait for your order to fill like you do with options sometimes. With futures, immediate. It's so quick. If, you're, if you love the scalp, it, the entries and exits will blow your mind, right? So I just want to put it out there as well. So for this particular play, I'm risking 187 to make 500, right, on this move, right? So you can see, you can actually literally see how much you're risking, right? Or to make, to make what? Let's say you want to play the downside, right? You want to get in under here. Let's say you want to do a limit order, right? Let's say you want to sell, do a limit order. Let's, I want, let's say you want your entry to be 40, 75, 25. Right, your stop loss is going to be above here. So let's say 40, 76, 75. Right, and let's say your take profit level is going to be just to make something up. Let's say it's way down here, 40, 63, 50. Right, so for this play, So for this play, you would be risking $75 to make $587, right? And you can, and this is a limit order. So if I were to press this, sell limit, I wouldn't get filled until it hit, hit my limit order. So 40, 75, 25, right? And it would automatically trigger a stop loss and trigger a take profit. So the trade's completely automated. I don't have to worry about anything else, right? Which is what I love about futures. Now, let me show you something just because. So let me go back on buy. Let me go market. Profit, 40.89.50. So the same setup as before. Stop loss, 40.75.25. Right, so you can see 175 to make 512 for MES. But let's go on ES. Let's go on ES real quick and plug in the same numbers. To show you the difference. First of all, so I had 10 contracts. Let's do 10 contracts of ES. Let's show you how much bigger this thing is. Right? So under here, 4075.25 or 4076.25. And then you have 40, I think I have 4089. Right? 4089.25 or 49.50. Yeah. 4089.50 as a take profit. Right? So this is how much bigger it is. With the same exact move, with the same exact amount of units, I'd be risking 1625 to make 5000 on the same exact move. So that gives you a little perspective about, you know, what you should be playing based on your account size, based on your risk management, right? Um, cuz you don't want to be just throwing around money contracts and stuff like that right let's say two contracts like even even one contract one contract will be equivalent of 10 right because you're making 10 times the amount right so just one right so one contract of es equals 10 contracts of uh mes just to give you some perspective on that because we literally just did it so imagine what 10 contracts is right it's a lot there's a lot of mes contracts all right, just to put some stuff in perspective for you. Um, also, before I forget, another thing, point number 500, why I like futures is because futures is open 23 hours a day, six days a week, right? So if you're somebody who works during the day and you don't have time to trade, you can trade in the evening. Uh, futures is open, the futures market is open from Sunday at six, I believe 6 p.m. Eastern time, and it closes Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So Saturday is the only day it's closed for the entire day. And during, and like I said, it's 23 hours a day. So it goes from, let's say, opens at sun, if it opens Sunday at 6 p.m., it won't close until the following day at 5 p.m., right? And then it'll reopen, and this is Eastern time, and they'll reopen at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So just take it through the week. Monday, it's already open. It'll close Monday at 5 p.m., reopen at 6 p.m., and then close Tuesday at 5 p.m., reopen at 6 p.m. So you have that hour break in between. And then other than that, you can trade. You can trade, which is absolutely awesome. Like I'm making like, well, I'm trading options. I'm looking at the move happen overnight, 
where futures i'm in that move now <laughs> right it, it's it's literally it's so cool like i could be on call of duty with the boys just chilling on 2k with the guys or watching a movie or chilling whatever or shoot walking around driving by the beach whatever it is check my phone boop bink bop um you know i'm in the trade yep two thousand dollars i'm done for the night, right? Overnight money. I go into the next day already up two thousand dollars. Everything else now I'm playing. Now I'm playing with profits, just stacking more money on top of that. Or sometimes it's like, yo, I made like one one time I made eight thousand dollars overnight. Woke up, didn't even trade during the day. I was like, I'm good. Like I'm not gonna give away any profits. I'm gonna withdraw this money and go about my business, right? That's another reason number five hundred seventy six why I love futures. Um, now I will say. Uh, just a few and I'm throwing a few other things in here because I this is a last minute video So I didn't get as organized as I want. I just want to get this out to you guys So another thing uh, will you make more money with options or futures now? I think it's complete It's so much more. It's so much easier to be profitable consistently profitable with futures because Obviously it depends on the trader, but because you're able to manage risk a lot easier, right? That's what I will say now I, Futures way better to trade it, if the market's choppy or lacks direction, uh, way way better to trade if you're somebody who has trouble. Uh, maybe you're selling too early, right? Or, or and and you sell too early and it keeps running because you don't you're scared of the pullbacks to, with options. You don't want those premiums to take away a lot of your profit, right? If you're somebody like that who has trouble holding futures, is perfect because. Right, you can go up ten dollars, and if you go down five dollars, you're not going to be down fifty percent. Right, you're going to be in profit exactly where you were five minutes ago when it was up only five dollars. Right, that, that's what I love. Now, options will be more profitable in a trending market. I will say that because it has implied volatility. When that implied volatility spikes, and then the value of those premiums go up crazy, six hundred percent in a trending market, options will definitely make you more money. Now. Even with that, I still love options. I still love futures over options um, just because, like I said, it's heavily leveraged. So you can use less money and make way more money uh, considering that, you know, obviously it's heavily leveraged. So you're using money that you're, bar you're pretty much borrowing money. But um, I will say that is, you know, if, if, you, if you're asking your Isaac, how much would I make more with futures? Would I make more with options? It, in a choppy market, it's, or like the past month, literally the month, the market has like been super choppy and lacked a lot of direction besides a couple spikes here and there. I've been trading futures the entire time. Like I trade options maybe once and I've been able to navigate through a choppy market prop, like very, like in a very profitable way without having to trip out about, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're, we're moving sideways. There's no room for options. I don't want to get faked out. Well, because the risk is so much easier to be managed, right? Yes, you know, obviously you don't want to get reckless, but I can move in confidence knowing that even if it's choppy, even if I get a random spike somewhere or whatever, I know I have certain parameters set in place to where I know I'm protected, right? So that's just something that I think that needed to be said. So lastly, as promised, um, I do have something for you guys. If you are somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, right, which is okay, which is okay, or if you're somebody who maybe you don't wanna use your own money, or maybe whatever your certain case is, right, I have something for you that is absolutely amazing for futures trading, and this is not sponsored at all. Um, they did not tell me to do this or pay me to do this. I genuinely think that this, I think it's, I just wish I knew when I first started trading. I am about to show you guys something called, it's, well, first it's a prop firm account or a prop firm. If you don't know what a prop firm is, they pretty much fund traders to trade their money and they'll take a 10% cut out of your not, out of 100% of your profits, right? So you'll keep 90, they'll keep 10%, right? So as you can see here, right, topstep.com, become a funded, tra funded futures trader. If you wanna check this out, I do have a link in my, uh, link in my description. Yes, it's a referral link. I, yeah, I don't feel bad about it. Look, you would too, right? Um, so tap that link, use that link. <laughs> use that link down below, appreciate you. Um, right, so as you can see here, become a funded, tra funded futures trader, uh, right? They have, this year alone, they have uh, paid out, or since 2020, they've paid out seven, over $7 million. They average 600 monthly accounts funded. They've been doing this the past 10 years. Uh, you can have a funded account in eight days, average payout processing time, seven hours. 
and as you can see here there are a few different options you have you can get fifty thousand dollars in buying power a hundred thousand dollars in buying power a hundred fifty thousand dollars in buying power they do charge a monthly fee now before you complain about this monthly fee let me ask you were you are you more likely to blow you know a, a few thousand dollars or uh several hundred dollars on a on an account on a real with real with your real money in it uh, or would you rather you know just pay 165 a month you know and i know you know if you're a teenager or maybe you just can't afford it right now i understand it may be a little pricey but i think this is an absolute steal if you can grab it because you're getting you're gaining access to money that you would not have and you get to trade it as if it was your own and then you don't have to carry into the risk it's like if i have a 100k account and it's my real money and i lose ten thousand dollars then i lost ten thousand dollars of my real money but if i have a 100k account a funded live account with them and i lose a bunch of money I'm, I'm still solid because it's really not my money so definitely check this out i'm not going to go through and explain how it works or all that stuff because you could they have they're really detailed in how they explain it but um definitely check out that check out that and use my link i'm watching you but uh that's all i have for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this video i know it's a pretty long one but there's a lot of good info in here and if you have any questions comments concerns or any additions to the information i have please feel free to leave in my uh, leave it down in the comments below uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe uh i appreciate it discord link down below as well strategy course link oh that's another thing my strategy is completely the same i have not changed anything my strategy is completely the same my I, like I, I changed nothing nothing at all exactly the same so if you want to check out my strategy check that link out below strategy course super dope course a lot of people have gotten it it goes over a lot of good stuff how i enter trades how i manage risk strategy setups all that stuff super dope course is literally worth a bunch of money right i've made a stupid amount of money doing exactly what i do in that course so definitely check it out but look i will see you guys in the next video be safe and uh shout out to the futures market i'm coming for you